So once we have clear staging and grading of our periodontitis patient, of course, we make a diagnosis to elaborate a treatment plan. And basically, stages one and two are those stages where the periodontitis, we can term it as mild to moderate. And normally, if we have a patient with uh, grades A or even B, we can most likely be very successful in the treatment doing the standard non-surgical periodontal treatment. However, when we have severe periodontitis, that is stages three and four, mostly when the patient is either grade B or C, then we will need to do complex periodontal therapy and particularly in stage four, we will need to do complex multidisciplinary treatment because we not only have to assess the treatment of periodontitis, but we need to assess the, we, we need to, to deal with uh, those other functional sequelae of the severe periodontitis situation when the patient has lost more than four teeth. Basically, the main criteria is severity, the degree of periodontal breakdown, but we have added complexity of management, which is defined by probing depths, the type of bone loss, presence of furcations, tooth mobility, and the number of missing teeth. And also we have defined the stages by extent, that is the number and distribution of teeth with detectable breakdown. Using this criteria, we have stages one and two, what we uh, normally term as incipient and moderate periodontitis, and stages three and four, which are situations in stage three where we have a severe periodontitis with potential for tooth loss, and stage four, we have severe periodontitis with extensive tooth loss and potential for losing the whole dentition. And uh, here in this slide, again, we not only have the framework for a staging, as I have alluded, but also the framework for grading. And we would grade the patient according to the risk of progression, and we may have direct evidence of progression of the disease, measured by clinical attachment loss or bone loss, or we may evaluate the presence of a specific risk factors that have proven a direct relationship with progression of periodontitis, such as uh, heavy smoking and uncontrolled diabetes. Here in this uh, table, you have all the different thresholds and criteria that will define the different stages. As you can see in stage one, basically the degree of uh, interdental clinical attachment loss is between one and two millimeters. The bone loss affects to the coronal third of the root, less than 15%. Patients have not lost teeth due to periodontitis. Patients do not have deep probing depths, four millimeters or less. Most of the bone loss that is detectable is horizontal. And clearly, similar to all stages, the extent could be localized when affecting less than 30% of the teeth or generalized. Stage two, clinical attachment loss is between three and four millimeters. Bone loss affects to up to a third of the root, 33%. And similarly to stage one, patient has not lost teeth due to periodontitis. Maximum probing depth is up to five millimeters. And mostly the detectable bone loss is of a horizontal pattern. We move to a stage three, where we have advanced attachment loss, five millimeters or more. We have advanced bone loss, which extends to the middle root and beyond. 
And depending whether the patient has lost less than four teeth or more than four teeth, then we would stage it in, th in three or four. And in addition to these general criteria, we would have in a stage three deep pockets, equal or more than six millimeters, presence of intrabony defects with vertical bone loss of more than three millimeters, presence of furcation involvement, and a moderate uh, rich defect. This would define stage three. And if additionally the patient has need for a complex rehabilitation because of masticatory dysfunction, then we would move this patient from a stage three to a stage four. And this is normally characterized by signs such as bite collapse, tooth drifting and or flaring, less than 10 occluding, occlusion pairs, and when, we, when the patient has a severe rich defect. Similarly, this slide summarizes the criteria for uh, grading. And uh, as we explained before, if we have direct evidence of progression, then we will measure what the progression has been in the last five years. And if it has been more than two millimeters, then we would grade the patient as C. Less than two millimeters, we would put the patient in grade B. And no progression at all, we would put the patient in grade A. If we don't have the direct evidence of progression, we would use the bone loss to age ratio. And similarly, if it is beyond one, the patient would be graded C. If it is between 0.25 and one grade B and less than 0.25 grade A. We also may look for indirect evidence of progression, depending whether the patient has heavy biofilm deposits at low level of destruction. This would be a clear phenotype of very slow progression or no progression whether we can find destruction that is commensurate with the biofilm de de deposits, that will be the regular grade B patient, or when we have uh, evidence of uh, periods of rapid destruction, or when we have evidence of very poor response to therapy, or when we have evidence uh, of a very severe destruction that is disproportionate to the uh, level of biofilm uh, deposits. And finally, the modifiers of the grade are those that can upgrade uh, the grade that we have established through progression. And these are the number of cigarettes per day, the threshold is 10 or more to upgrade the grade, and HbA1c levels, which is the level of, uh, of glycemic control that a diabetic patient may have and the threshold is 7% or more.